I'm Eric and I have a slide deck here to talk about the value of AI in cuttings interpretation. I'm looking forward to the Q&A and hopefully a lively discussion afterwards. So in, in our science analytics, if you've seen some of our other webinars, you'll know that what we do is uh, data science for the earth sciences. And we see a common problem uh, in our uh, domain that we have very large industrial data sets that are severely underutilized. And we think that we can utilize them more and extract value from them and use them to support uh, decision making. So also this uh, talk will be about that, but in the context of uh, cuttings data. So cuttings data is a new data type uh, for us. Uh, our involvement with this data is less than one year now, but it was initiated uh, as we got in touch with a company called Rockwash Geodata. And this is a company with actually cuttings experts. So they are acquiring uh, uh, data from cutting samples uh, all over the world. And they're also doing a very large project uh, in Norway with uh, digitizing all the cuttings data from the country. So it's around 700,000 uh, samples. So we work with them. Uh, obviously, we develop the software and provide them the data science uh, skills. And, but it's very important, as you will see, that we also work with domain experts uh, with this data type. And that's our colleagues in, in Rockwash Geodata. And together, we can provide uh, value uh, for, with this sort of data. And we interpret the cuttings data not only for the purpose of interpreting that in isolation, but in order to use that as input into composite workflows, where we will use the output of the cuttings interpretation as input to well log interpretation, for example, and the output of that as input to 3D property prediction uh, based on, on seismic. And of course, all of it uh, is intended to support uh, business decisions, meaning that it's important not only to make uh, deterministic predictions, but also to capture the uncertainty uh, in the predictions, which we try to do in with all the data types that we uh, we work with. In order to do this sort of thing at scale, uh, we have developed this system uh, here, the EarthNet environment. Uh, and uh, it's got a data layer, data platform at the, at the base that makes sure that we can scale on top of structured, indexed, and analytics-ready data. The cloud there at the upper left uh, just illustrates that uh, when we train these machine learning models, uh, we need a bit of compute power, so we access that from, from the cloud providers. And the whole application that we will talk about today is called Earth Vision. It's uh, one of, of many in our family of applications underneath the EarthNet banner. Um, and that is our computer vision application that we're using for this uh, type of, of data. So I'll dive into the topic of computer vision in general and the cuttings image interpretation in, uh, specifically. So computer vision, uh, of course, it's a technology that we're all used to. Um, many of our devices use this uh, every day, just simply to log into your phone uh, to, by recognizing your face. Uh, from the camera and the computer vision comes in many modes or methods. Uh, we have some examples here, all of which are available in, in Earth Vision. So starting from the left, we have a, a method called image classification. Uh, this is kind of the most uh, basic one where we just classify the image, you give assign one class uh, to each image. So it is the upper image is a cat, the lower is a dog and so on. If we want a bit more precision, we want to know where within an image is the object located. We can use this object detection. And we get this localization information through the bounding box that outlines the object of interest. 
for even more precision uh, and basically pixel level, uh, single pixel level precision, uh, we use a technique called semantic segmentation. So you see then you, we draw a mask precisely around the object of interest, uh, the fish uh, in that case, middle case. Uh, for the purpose of interpreting rock images, uh, we have developed some, uh, some tools that allow us to basically do semantic segmentation, um, but also to build the training data that is needed to train these models uh, efficiently. So that workflow is a combination of unsupervised segmentation, where the computer simply segments the image on its own without any human labeling, and a process called, that we call semantic uh, embedding to produce these uh, semantic masks. And semantic meaning that these uh, colorful classes carry some geological meaning. It could be lithology or mineralogy or something meaningful to geoscientists in our case. So as you can see, data annotation and labeling is a fundamental uh, activity to, to do well with high quality and also to do efficiently. So the Earth Vision application includes a lot of the tooling to, to enable that for the users. So starting with the, the basics and the classification mode uh, when you're labeling data. So you can uh, go to this view here and note that all, all of this is a web application, so it's in the, in the browser. And in this view, you have the ontology, basically the classification system accessible there in the upper right. So you can assign uh, the correct class to, to the image. Uh, on the lower right, you have a long list of properties. And this list includes everything we know about this image. So which well does it come from, which depth, uh, which stratigraphic formation, uh, and all the auxiliary data, such as data from um, uh, XRF and uh, XRD, and you can add any data source you want. So it's a big table of data uh, behind uh, these images. And if you work like this, uh, annotating one image at a time, you can make your annotation decisions uh, informed by all this information. So obviously that allows you to uh, provide very high quality uh, data annotation or labeling, uh, but you'll be rather slow. So we have another uh, method that allows you to basically annotate many images in, in one go uh, with a matrix view. And, and you can filter the data uh, as a function of these uh, attributes or properties there in the list in the lower right, so that you can choose to work on, on one type of, uh, of rocks uh, procession to kind of make sure you have consistency. And this kind of multi-select uh, window looks a bit like this. And this slide here also is also an example of uh, an ontology so this is a simple ontology. Uh, it just includes the dominant uh, lithological classes, mudstone, limestone, sandstone, and, and coal. And we have classified uh, a lot of images, uh, I think around 50,000 images uh, like this, uh, with this ontology. Uh, we have done the same amount of images with uh, this ontology here, which is cuttings, facies. This is a lot more classes. So there are many classes within the sandstone category, many classes within the mudstone category, and so on. Um, in addition to having multiple ontologies for the classification exercise, we also have multiple data annotators. Uh, so that uh, it's also something that ensures that we have quality, and that's something that ensures that we can check uh, if models produced by the annotations from one annotator agrees with that uh, produced by another annotator or not. Uh, the classification is, of course, a bit crude. Uh, there is a lot of uh, additional information uh, within each image that you will not capture by a single class. So I'm showing here this uh, semi-supervised uh, semantic segmentation uh, approach. 
So one way to do this could be that you simply uh, paint a colorful mask with the class colors on top of this image. But that would be very, very slow. Uh, so we came up with this method here uh, that initially produces this uh, unsupervised segmentation mask. This is this uh, red, orange, uh, dark image there, second uh, bottom from the, to the right. Uh, this is just produced by an unsupervised model that aims to make sure you have maximum similarity uh, within each class and, and you have maximum difference between the classes and there are some uh, also some guidance to make sure you have some kind of continuity. And in this and the, the embedding editor that we see here, we translate that unsupervised mask into the supervised one in the lower right. So where yellow is the sand grain, green is the, the, the mud, and the orange is a cemented sand. The differentiate between loose and cemented sand. And we do this uh, method here, not even one image at a time, but we do it in, uh, in batches. So you see all the images in the column to the left are very similar to each other. So by doing this on one image, uh, the same translation from the unsupervised mask propagates to the other ones. So we just do some spot checks uh, on some of the other ones in this batch of, let's say, 50 images, and then we, we store that. So in some way you label 50 images in, in one go with this pixel level detail. Uh, so then we have, have training data. And we move on to to train these models, and uh, we can use basically any kind of state of the art model. Uh, there's an example here from a couple of months back. We used the efficient net v two. Uh, we make sure we use data augmentation uh, during training, uh, multiple fold predictions, and and we capture all the the metrics uh, for the models and so on. So these models train quite quickly, uh, so we can do many iterations also uh, quickly. Then we make the predictions, and the predictions from the models are these uh, colorful masks, where the color indicates the uh, lithology or mineralogy. Uh, we get the output along with uh, confusion matrices to see uh, where we are doing well and where we're not doing so well. Uh, we, we get lots of other metrics like uh, accuracy and, and, and loss and so on. So we can quantitatively assess the, the quality of each of the models that we, we make. Uh, but quality control is key. Also quality control beyond the standard machine learning uh, methods. So how do we build trust in, in these model predictions? So we built uh, a few uh, tools here also to address uh, this specifically. So I mentioned all this auxiliary data that we have that goes uh, along with each sample. So they can be viewed like this as a big table with lots of columns. And we can use this data not only as labeling support, but also as quality control uh, after we have the predictions. So one view that we have designed here is this matrix. So you can choose one attribute for the vertical axis, another one for the horizontal axis. Uh, and you can choose anything you want for each axis. Uh, in this setup here, I've chosen to put the prediction of a cutting species model on the y-axis and uh, SIO2 on the x-axis. Just to illustrate the example uh, that you might know that some of the, your predicted classes should not really contain quartz in significant amounts. And you can check uh, from this uh, matrix here if it, it does. And then that's a hint that something is wrong. And if you find a mistake like this, you can simply click on the relevant cell and uh, that act clicking action uh, triggers a a labeling task for you. So you get a labeling project and you will be asked to then reconsider the images that have this combination of this model prediction and this uh, attribute category. 
Then you can put all sorts of things here so you can compare one model to another model, the model from one uh, annotator with a model from another annotator. You can even compare different ontologies and it's totally flexible. So this is an efficient way to uh, to kind of find mistakes, improve the training data, and then you go back, uh, retrain the model and iteratively improve uh, over time. Uh, we can also do the QC in uh, our other EarthNet applications. These are images from uh, EarthView, or kind of well data visualization toolbox. So you can plot histograms, uh, cross plot anything, plot it on maps, plot it on uh, well bore plots, and, and see if you find anything that seems not to make sense. For example, high density coals or things like that. And then you can use, uh, in, in, in this software package, you can use a lasso select to identify these uh, errors and then go and, and remove them or correct them uh, from your uh, training data set and retrain again. So another way to iteratively improve uh, with time. So the examples and really the topic of the day was uh, uh, creating value uh, from cuttings data with artificial intelligence. But this uh, Earth Vision application is more generic. It can work with, with any images, including uh, microscopy, uh, electron microscope here to the left, thin sections, cuttings images, core images, satellite images, uh, and more. And uh, in order to, to extract the value, I just wanted to show this again. It's important to go beyond simply interpreting the uh, images, but making sure that we can uh, use the interpretation of the images together with well data, together with seismic data, in order to make sense of it all at the end and to support business decisions. So in order to do this at scale, uh, it's really key that we have a setup with a, a contextualized uh, data platform at the bottom. And that will allow us now to integrate more data types than we could uh, one year ago. So now we can add all this image data uh, yeah, to our toolbox and expand the capability of, of EarthNet and truly integrate data across wide scales from the microscopic to the regional uh, setting. <laughs>